You're listening to the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Brewski. Featuring former federal prosecutor and president of West Coast Trial Lawyers, Nima Ramani. Jesse Hildebrandt, who is the niece of Jody, spoke to Nightline just the other week talking about her interactions with Jody while she was younger, claiming that she would lock her up in a room and make her write out her sins on paper. Of course, a reference to the LDS relationship that Jody has and presented to many of her clients that came in from the LDS church, very much about sins and correcting that. She also had talked about making her sleep outside in the snow and being duct taped, something we also saw with wow. Ruby's children that obviously sparked the investigation and got all this shut down. With stories like this and we heard Jesse on Nightline say, look, I've been trying to let people know about this for quite some time. Even Ruby's own daughter, who's 20, has been trying to make people aware of this well before uh, the emaciated brother ended it up on the neighbor's doorstep. What is so broken here that these two were never stopped or investigated more thoroughly? I know that they did take a small look at them, I believe, in 2020, but walked away saying that there really wasn't a whole lot they could do. Until there's an incident, obviously we finally found our incident. Yeah, no, it's hard. So then now you have kind of the opposite, right? Yeah. Where, not Maya's case, but you have those reports, right? And do you have enough to kind of step in? And apparently it seems like it was. I mean, people are coming out of the woodworks and we don't know what was told to social workers or law enforcement and, you know, why they didn't have enough evidence. But I mean, clearly... You know, when you're dealing with this type of abuse of your own children, it's usually not one isolated incident, right? There's mm -hmm. sometimes months or years of abuse, and that's what we're seeing here. But, you know, this is, again, and I keep saying it's tough. You know, these juvenile records, they're confidential, they're sealed, they're not public. So, whereas criminal cases, eventually everything is going to come out yeah. in a public courtroom, right? Mm -hmm. You know, grand jury may be secret, but, you know, the search warrant affidavits are going to be unsealed. There's going to be a preliminary hearing. There's going to be a trial. It's all going to come out in Delphi. But when it comes to children, those proceedings, they're not open to the public. We don't know what reports were made, what investigators did in response to those reports. So we're relying on what's been told to us by, you know, family members and, you know, friends and neighbors and so forth. But it, it's very difficult to know from the law enforcement social worker perspective what they actually knew and mm -hmm. what they acted upon. Well, especially when you have people that are very good at uh, turning on a persona and then being able to turn it off. And, and obviously they were well versed at doing that, especially from their YouTube channel, but also not always hiding it all that well either, which is why you had a 17,000 person petition saying, please take a look at these people. What's your take on Kevin, sure. on Kevin Frankie and his bizarre reaction to his daughter that came into the home to get some of her own belongings. He lashing out, threatening to sue police saying that she burglarized the home when in reality she took some of her stuff, but then she also took some rather interesting information, some documents and notes and journals of Kevin's seeming, I guess, if we're just to look at this on the surface, I think she knew where some, you know, damning information may have been kept. Yeah, Kevin better tread lightly because I mean, we've talked about his exposure as well. You know, obviously he wasn't there, but he failed to protect his kids. And now he's trying to threaten his kids. I mm -hmm. mean, he's someone that, you know, may get wrapped up in a criminal investigation. So. Yeah, just really sort of bizarre behavior. If I were him, I would try to just keep my mouth shut and distance myself from Rudy as much as I can. Yeah, it's been really just strange to watch because you try and put yourself in someone else's shoes. And okay, sometimes it makes a little more sense, even bizarre behavior. This one, I'm looking at it and I go, I can't identify what type of shoes Kevin is wearing to try and go there because his actions uh, seem to sometimes contradict themselves and just... I don't know. Are we watching someone, you know, flail and drown here in the insanity that is this case? I have no idea what this guy was thinking. Just being with Frank, I was Kevin being with Ruby and mm -hmm. how he's handled this. And then, hey, these are kids. They're being abused. They're being tortured. You know, I mean, it's just terrible. And I don't know what kind of relationship he has with his kids, but I can say this may not be criminal, but it doesn't seem like he's a good dad at all. Want to listen ad-free? 
Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.